Hey YouTube, Captain Mark here from Kim's Landing Sport Fishing. I was uh, I was off site today doing some videos and came down to see Ryan and do a video on the his P66 mount for uh, my charter boat. And while I was down here, Ryan was showing me some really cool stuff. So I uh, figured since I'm now a Garmin guy and I've put in a whole bunch of Garmin stuff on my boat, uh, I wanted to do a video uh, for you Garmin LifeScope guys. I think many of you know I'm a Panoptics guy using the uh, the PS30. Uh, but uh, Ryan's got a really cool mount for the LVS32 and soon to be the LVS34 when, when his arrives. Uh, and really it's a, it's a spin-off of his, one of his adjustable uh, mounts for the Lorentz um, Active Target. So this is his adjustable multi-view mount that he's had for the Lorentz guys and he's had requests to have this for Garmin also. So he's listened to you guys and he's now got it for you Garmin guys using the, uh, the LVS32. And soon to be the LVS 34. Hopefully sooner than later yeah. for the 34. So. Definitely. And what's cool is the way he's done this. It's very modular. So if you were a Lorance guy, you're not know, moving over Garmin. You can now actually just change a couple of things. And similar, if you're an LVS 32 guy and you upgrade to an LVS 34, a couple of small parts, and you can you can change it over. And he'll talk about that a little bit later. Yeah. But with that, Ryan, maybe just talk through the. Your, your mount, the so benefits, what it does. They all, yeah, so your fractured mounts, I don't have one on me right now, but with standard L bracket and you get the uh, kind of tooth serration thing that would normally fasten onto the side with the nut or whatnot, the ratcheting nut there. You're really limited with the factory mount to the actual degree of angle. It was 18 degrees yeah, 18, or something we just degrees. came up with actually how much per click basically you can do. My mounts are basically, uh, to start off, they're full billet CNC aluminum, all 6061 stainless steel hardware. Um, there's no plastic in any of my mounts. Um, fully adjustable, they're infinite angles, so you can actually angle it wherever you would need to be. Um, for fine tuning, it's absolute key to be able to get that perfect picture, um, especially in perspective view. And basically, it goes just like that basically in the down view. There's actually um, indicators here for your modes. So we're at green for the down, um, forward is in red. So when we go to forward view, we're basically lining the black line up with the red line there. So you know exactly where, and these are the lines that you see are the factory settings of where Garmin, or in this case with the Lowrance, they wanted you to run it. Um, that being said, you can put it wherever you want to be able to fine tune and get that perfect image you're after. Um, the real benefit to this and the fine tuning and adjustability is in perspective mode. So when we basically to go in from down what it's in now, down forward view into perspective is basically nothing more than a flick of wrist. You pull it out and turn it, I'm now in perspective mode. Um, and then when I look at this, and this cable's gonna be in the way, should have taken that strap off. There we go, a little bit more room. So in perspective mode, basically you now can angle this wherever you want. Um, the thing about perspective mode is it goes off of bottom contact that's hitting the light bed. The, how the cone angle hits the light bed from here to here, Garmin wants you to run it at the best pictures you get are gonna be from that 16 to maybe 22 feet of water. That's where you're gonna get your best perspective mode imaging with the Garmin transducer with factory mounts because you're getting maybe 20 feet of lake bed contact. When you go into shallower water, that picture changes because you're getting less contact and your picture goes down like not nearly as nice. So basically by angling it upwards, you're not only seeing up higher in the water column, you're actually increasing the distance that the cone angle is hitting on the lake bed floor. And that relates to what your imaging is like. And same when you go into really deep water, you can, if you go into like 50, 60, 80, 100 feet of water, you can actually angle it way down deep so that the cone angle is back to that same width that's hitting the deep water on the lake floor bed as it was at 20 feet or something like yeah. that. Think about your trans, think about the transducer, it's almost like a spotlight, right? So exactly, it's, it's like a spotlight. It. It's narrow. That's actually a really good uh, way of looking at it. You want to hit that cone angle or the spotlight, the light that's shining in the lake bed, you want to have that the same size at say 80 feet is it what it looks like at 20 feet or at five feet. You want to keep that area of that light hitting or the beam angle the same and that's where you get your imaging from. 
So that is huge in perspective. And then to go back, it's basically a flip of the wrist and it turns back in. These mounts for the LVS32 only run in the starboard position. So that means that the cable is at the front. A lot of guys will run the cable at the back and run on the port side um, off the trolling motor or whatnot. But what I found was that having it at starboard, there's a lot less kinking and movement in the actual transducer cable compared to at the back. With the factory mount, there's so much swing and I'm 100% positive that that is what causes so many uh, issues with the actual cable entry point cracking with the uh, LVS32s is because it's at the back and there's so much swing and movement. Basically, in down what you see now to go to forward, there's hardly anything there. And by the time we go into perspective, the cable hardly moves at all. There's no kink, you're not putting real steep angles or anything on there. So for a guy that uh, has an LVS32, it is great that way. You don't need an extra cable guard or anything there. And uh, the really neat thing about this, like Mark was saying at the beginning, is basically once I get my hands on one of the new 34s that are coming out, you can basically take the existing mount that you buy from me and turn it into the 34 by just taking off the factory adapter, it goes on the bottom. Not the fact, the adapter that goes to the transducer. You basically remove this billet aluminum piece here and then this is one that's off the active target here. It's gonna look it's gonna pretty look, well the exact yeah. same as what the uh, the active target does for Lorentz with the sides and overall shape, everything looks very similar. You just similar don't know where the bolt spacing is and such yet. Exactly, and it's the angle adjustment. Yeah. So basically you're gonna swap out the bracket and it's gonna be relatively really cheap to be able to do that. So you're gonna keep your existing mount and then what you're gonna do is there'll be two supplied decals. These are fancy dome decals that uh, really high quality marine adhesive. You're gonna peel those off and then you're gonna put the new LVS 34 decals on it so that the hatch mark and indicator modes are all lined up perfectly for that transducer. So that's the actual mount itself for actually mounting. For guys that wanna run off a trolling motor, um, I have connecting rods available that this connecting rod would actually mount to the shaft of your trolling motor and stay permanently fixed on it. And then what you do is basically, if the trolling motor shaft is right here basically, that being your shaft, this guy slides up in and you put the pin through it here. Kind of hard to do one handed. There we go. And then that's for your trolling motor shaft. So the shaft will be right here and it can do all the modes in the down, forward, and then pull it out and turn it to get into your perspective. You know, I like, I like the fact that it's removable. Because if you're parking yeah, your boat and somewhere and you don't want to leave a $1,500 transducer, that's that can the get main plugged. thing. That, and even anyway. when you have it on the top, especially if you're in a marina yeah. or your tournament guy at a hotel, that's yeah. the absolute worst place for things walking away on the road. Exactly. Um, so be able to disconnect it. Not that you maybe don't want to disconnect it from the black box, but just to be able to disconnect it, coil it up, and throw it in the cutty somewhere. Yeah out of prying eyes sort of thing for Absolutely. the nighttime when you're at the hotel or whatnot, you're not covering the boat. It's a good way to do so you can quickly take it off. I also have a lot of guys, um, the active target guys, with huge request for the guys down in the deep south in Florida and all that stuff that when they get into these massive weed beds, like mats of weeds, they don't want the transducer on there because it's yeah. gonna get clogged up with weeds. Out of the way. Quickly pull it up out of the way, throw it off to the side, do your normal fishing. You wanna get back into using the, uh, the mount then, whether it's live scope or the active target, um, basically throw it back on and away you go. Um, for the pole mount, uh, it'll go in, the actual stub adapter is 0.855, which is for a very common size of uh, tubing. And then if that doesn't fit your actual pole size, I have a series of different adapters that basically would slide over your pole and then this guy slides onto the mount and basically you pin it and you take it off. So this would stay, pull, uh, it comes with a bolt that goes on there, you clamp that solid, never comes off. And then basically it's just the adapter. So at the end of the day, you can take it off your pole just as quickly as what you can do, take yeah. it off your trolling motor if you want to, just to take it off, store it, whatever, wrap it up, put it in a bag or whatever you want. Um, you'll see a lot of guys that have covers that they're putting covers on these things so they don't get hit by rocks or anything. 
what's better than that is actually physically taking it off and putting it somewhere that's actually protected. I also um, love how everything's modular with yours because that way if someone can have it mounted on their trolling motor at the front, that's great. 100%. If, they, if they're a multi-species guy and next thing you know they're going to go salmon or walleye trolling and they want to have it on the back take of the, it the boat. back and put it on a pole in a heartbeat. Absolutely. So, and actually saying that, um, I am personally a Lawrence guy. I've been running the active target um, in a trolling scenario off my trolling motor. Uh, so what I have been doing is actually running it in scout mode. I will troll, um, when I'm trolling, I have my kicker pushing and my trolling motor doing all the steering and autopiloting with my smaller Lund. I actually had the active target in scout view mode going dead straight forward. And I was really surprised in uh, late summer and walleye fishing too on the Bay of Quinney up here was how many fish I would see like a hundred feet ahead of the boat and then all of a sudden you would see them actually go way off to the sides. Yep. And normally if I didn't have that, you wouldn't be seeing anything on the 2D or anything because you'd think there's no fish there when in reality, the fish were ahead of you, they just spooked and went off to the side. And that's where you can instantaneously let out your planer boards further and get an awesome planer board bite or whatnot, right? So that's one thing you can do that with both of them. And on the trolling motor, I just had it in scout and when it turned, it was still pointing in the direction all the time that it was going. Um, it's funny you said it because everything really about, well. and you know, you know, I know you're a big walleye guy. I, I don't walleye troll as much, but I used to. You know, that's why typically we don't run a lot of riggers because 100%. it's your planer boards, it's your divers, and, and you exactly. just talk to the fly. Of... You can now actually see it because yeah. your, your 2D which shows nothing. Exactly. Yeah, there's days that you don't see anything on the 2D and your planer boards, your father's planer boards are getting bites and that's why. They're actually getting spooked and to be able to see well ahead of the boat in scout mode with the Lorance or the uh, perspective and the uh, with the live scope, you're able to see them because that beam angle is so wide. You see them come in and hit it, and then you've got that 135 degree of beam angle, which covers like a vast amount of space out in front of you. And you could physically see them going off the site instantly. Uh, see a two different websites, one for Canadians only, and then one for the international customers. You go under the uh, 3600 series mounts. That's right now at the very top of the uh, list of transducer mounts. And you'll see in this case for the LVS, it's the RTG 3600. And what you get with that, you get the actual mount itself and they all come with cable management straps so you can wrap your strap. You don't have to deal with zip ties or anything like that. They're high quality uh, Velcro strap. They actually go around and you get two of them and you can attach that to your trolling motor or um, to your pole mount. And then what I like to do is when you take it off at the end of the day, if you're coiling it up and everything, use that same strap to wrap up your cable and it's nice in a secured spot like that and it works well. Awesome, no, it's, uh, these are, when Ryan showed me, I thought really neat idea, great mounts. And I just love the, the modular effect because I think for many of us that are now using some kind of live sonar, um, we're just scratching the surface. And 100%. I think this allows you to start to have that real flexibility, you know, where you, you know, can use it for one purpose, then later on you can, Put a different mount somewhere, use it for another purpose. Exactly. What yeah. we're doing with this stuff today and what we're doing with this stuff two, three years from now is going to be very different. I think. Oh, 100%. It's changing all the time and uh, you look at how things are going and it's just, if you don't have it, um, not that there's anything wrong with not having it, but it's such an advantage to be able to see. And again, coming back to that trolling situation I just mentioned, that put me on fish this year that normally I would never have known was yeah. even, that that scenario was even happening. So. Um, just uh, something to think about and very versatile. And yeah, you uh, upgrade number one with the live scope mount, the 32. You don't have to have the actual perspective mount. This does both, so you save a bit of money there. And you get the zero degree. This shoots basically straight down. It's not skewed on that uh, couple degree angle there. And yeah, very versatile. You can change it from one to the other if you want. It's very cost effective to uh, change out the decals and the adapter plate. And uh, so you could buy this right now if you're still running or thinking about running a 32. And you know, six months from now when the garments finally caught up with shipping and all that stuff, you get a 34 at the end of the summer. Who knows, maybe they have some deals, never know. Um, then all you do is swap out those two brackets. They just unbolt and uh, swap out the brackets, the lower piece and throw some decals on and you're good to go. So that's awesome. pretty well it. So thanks for stopping by and I could show you this. And, yeah, no, uh, thanks for thanks for uh, having me. It's neat to see you. I uh, know being into your panoptic stuff, it was always uh, something probably in the back of your mind that uh, 
just uh, more inquisitive of uh, what it could do for you and uh, well you know uh, it's funny you say that so yeah I've got as uh, for those of you that don't know I've got the PS30 on the back of my uh, my charter boat I've got on the flip configuration using one of Ryan's uh, mounts I think it's what the RTG 1500 I'm using yeah I use yep. the RTG 1500 but as you say that I think the future actually for someone like me is I'll have that RTG 1500 and the PS30 in that flip configuration that's given me um, that 40 degree, 40 degree cone, call it, you know, front and back of the boat. Uh, but I think the future is actually having something like the LVS 32 or the Just 34 on the boat. What I, now me being a Lowrance guy, I've always had the live sight, which is similar to yep. your PS30. Um, what I find is that my live sight, and the same with the PS30, that is more of your scouting tool in a sense. That it's up above your 2D that when you see stuff go through, but you can see fish coming in, move around. The actual live scope or active target or the 32 or the 34, that basically is a way, if you're using a big combination, is to actually be able to then zoom in on your target. Yeah. And the ability to maybe have this on a pole at the back if you're a trolling guy, whether you're a salmon guy with a dipsy which isn't super far out from the boat, Yep. How far are your deep, deep divers are? You know, deep divers, maybe I've got, you know, 100, sorry, 200, 250. So that's still probably out. a little bit far. Yep. Maybe with the 34, uh, the active target shoots pretty far. Um, I haven't run my uh, live scope enough to uh, get that figured out, but nice close in, you'd be able to fine tune and point it basically at your dipsies or with my active target, I'll actually have it on a pole shooting at my board yep. lines. And if I'm running short leads or going along a shoreline um, and I'm only 50 to 100 feet out and a short light lead, I'll actually shoot the transducer right at the lure and be able to sit there and watch it. So I think that's, yeah. and I, you know, I think that for salmon trollers, I'm going to give two examples where I think that's going to be huge. So right now it's, uh, what is it, April 8th, April 9th? Spring Kings. Spring Kings. So, you know, sure. someone's fishing Bam, Spring Browns. Kings or Browns. Oh my goodness, in shallow water. You know, I, yeah, the PS30 is telling what's going on under the boat, slightly in front, slightly behind. But what if I'm five, ten feet too deep? Exactly. And I can actually have, you know, an LS30, LVS32 or 34 shooting into the shoreline to see what, you know, is actually on, you know, call it the, the port or starboard of the boat. Exactly. And then similarly, stagers. Yeah, people, people, stagers, stagers is same thing. thing. People don't realize when you're going down the water how just one boat width or two boat widths off the side, yeah. it could be a totally different world. Yeah, I remember I remember fishing one tournament uh, with a buddy of mine in the fall where we were on the fish and we were getting bites and there was boats that were, you know, they were close enough, they weren't getting the bites, they weren't seeing the same fish, they were they were where we were. And yeah. I think this is where, yeah. as a salmon troller, having, you know, you know, for me being Garmin, having the live scope with the, you know, called the more traditional panoptics, the older technology, I think that would be, uh, the, that's probably a future game changer. It just, it, the cost adds up. So, you know, doing everything a piece at a time. So when it comes back to cost, so that's one nice thing about these. Yes, it's an initial investment, investment, but you're also spending 1,500, us up here in Canada to $2,000 for a, uh, the transducer with a box. The mount, substantially way less than that. But the neat thing about it is that down the road to change things out, you have the ability to with these mounts. You're not, you decide to go to the 34, you don't have to sell this whole thing to someone else. You take it off, give them the factory bracket back and just yeah. swap it out and away you go. So it's nice that way and very versatile. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to uh, get these in the hands of more Garmin guys. The active target guys have been loving them since the initial release back in uh, Christmas holiday sort of thing of uh, 2021. And instantly I had the Garmin guys saying, hey, I want some, I want one too. So. Um, revamp the product line to make it work for both and now it's just uh this is the final product and it's ready to go and uh, that's why mark came by and I'm doing the other video i thought let's show you just yeah, when you're into the live sonar thing may as well uh see what you think and go from there so awesome well thank you so much ryan don't forget folks if you like this video don't forget to click that like button and while you're at it i might as well subscribe to the channel anyways uh good luck on the water folks and we'll talk to you later thanks, thanks so much bye